All right, folks. Well, as far as I can tell, that works. So, uh, thanks for your patience, and uh, good to see you all over here. But now for the real moment of truth. Does this work? Maybe. Nothing's happening. <sighs> well, we can't win them all. Wait, no. I know why this isn't working. Hold on. Yeah, there it is. Eric Cartman in chat. And then I hide this. Get rid of that. The system works. You love to see it. All right, back to the countdown. See you folks soon.
Hello, and welcome back to the Orion Arm. I am Mark, the man behind the curtain, and tonight we continue to create the star map for Dawn of Victory, our science fiction setting. So, this is going to be a chill stream, because uh, this week has been rough, and man, I need to relax. I'm putting down some star systems on a cool map. Seems like the way to go. But before we can get into that, I got a bunch of stuff I gotta go over. If this is your first time watching these streams, this is kind of, uh, I don't know what this is. This is like a, a half graphic design session where I try to, to build out this map in Illustrator, and then it's half podcast or discussion or, or something where I just talk about, you know, why I'm doing the things I'm doing, answer questions, that whole thing. So, uh, depending on the, the volume of questions, we'll be giving priority to, uh, uh, the super chats here, but I'll try to get to them throughout the stream. But before we can get to that, even let's go to uh, the links I gotta provide here. So first, if you want to see this map uh, for yourself in all its glory, you can go to map.champlain.group. It has been updated since last week. Um, I added a bunch. Of, I mean, I'll go over that later. Added a bunch of names, but the current uh, version of the map is there. We got the wiki at uh, wiki.champlain.group. This is all the, the lore related to this universe. Still kind of sparse on the wiki, but we're slowly uh, adding it, uh, adding more stuff to it. And actually, next week, next stream, I'll be going over some details uh, for any interested volunteers who might want to help maintain the wiki. And then, finally, we got the, uh, the link to all the systems itself. So as we're adding um, systems on the map here, if you want to follow along and help keep track by adding them to this document, uh, that would be very much appreciated. Uh, as we got a lot of star systems to, to keep on top of, so having this list is handy. And we're also using this list to, uh, I don't know, take suggestions. We're calling them bounties. Basically, over the course of this project, there's going to be some things where we need suggestions. And uh, calling those bounties, putting them out there, the one from last week was we needed some uh, Brazilian names. And we got a ton of great ones. Maybe I can actually bring it on screen here. Uh, yeah, here we go. All the suggestions for Brazilian star systems. I took some from here, I brought in some of my own, and uh, I think we got some good ones. So, that's the link there if you want to help keep track and give suggestions. But the other... No, let's not go into that just yet. I got some of the things I want to... Uh, go over first. So, another thing I said I wanted to do at the start of every stream is go over questions I got from last week, or questions I talked about last week that maybe I didn't love the uh, the answers I provided. Overall, I think my answers were good. I'm, I'm doing a lot of stuff on these streams. I'm, you know, editing the map, trying to answer questions. All the questions are hard. My answers normally suck. But there was one question I wanted to revisit uh, about Greece. Uh, someone asked what the status of Greece was in the Dawn of Victory setting, and I think I said they're just in the Axis, and that wasn't the complete answer. The idea is that by uh, the future that this setting kind of represents, nationalities have kind of split in multiple ways. So, while the Greek nation-state might be part of the Axis, uh, Greeks themselves might be spread across in a number of groups and nations, so uh, that's the that's the full answer. Okay, so, apart from that, I also said I'm going to start each stream with an explanation of how FTL works. And I'm doing this mostly because I haven't fully figured out how FTL works, or how FTL works, so... I feel like if I keep explaining it stream by stream, eventually I'll come up with a uh, good explanation. And, rather than deleting my little diagrams I draw as I go, I'm going to keep them on a separate layer that we can revisit every stream. So hopefully this diagram over the next decade will become very well put together. I don't know. I'm just going to spin in here. So FTL in Dawn of Victory. First, let's revisit the map. You will notice we have star systems and we have lines. Those lines are what we're calling cosmic strings. And the idea is, how do I get colors in Illustrator? All right, Big Bang starts. Why is it still gray? Come on, Illustrator, work with me here. All right, the strings are gray, fine. So, Big Bang's, wait, what, that's gonna annoy me now. Why is this gray? It's because this is gray, but I changed it to red twice. It should be red. It's still gray, why is it gray? Uh, if you're new, I am uh, a novice. When it, there, okay, I made another color, Jesus. 
Let's go to these. Okay, so cosmic strings. How do they work? Now it's gray again. <laughs> like I said, I normally work in Photoshop. Illustrator's new. Whatever, the cosmic strings. They're they're between <laughs> They're Ah, oh, Jesus. Is this starting off well? Ah, uh, whatever. Let's get the uh, the work UI going anyway. Someone pointed that out in the chat. Okay, so cosmic strings. They formed during the creation of the universe, the Big Bang. They're pulled between uh, gravity wells, let's say. So cosmic strings just naturally form between star systems, which I'm representing with these almost circles. So cosmic strings link star systems. But when you're traveling along a cosmic string, it's not like you're you're riding it like in Star Wars or Stellaris. Rather, what cosmic strings do is greatly increase the efficiency of uh, FTL drive. So technically, if you're in a starship, you can fly any which way. It's just it's going to be very slow. Your warp drive or whatever we're calling it is not uh, efficient, so you're making a bunch of small jumps. But if you coordinate your jump so it aligns with a cosmic string, you can go a lot further. So instead of going this far in one jump, now you're going this far. So you're making this distance and maybe one or two jumps as opposed to the multiple you would need. So getting from one place to another isn't necessarily based on the distance, but rather the strength of the cosmic string. Hopefully that made sense. This makes sense in my head. I feel like this is a good way to do it. All I'm trying to do with the uh, FTL in the setting is just create natural choke points and, and things that are going to make geopolitics work. So this is my explanation so far. I think it's great. I, I yeah, I think you look at this and you have a perfect understanding of, of how FTL works in this universe. So really, really nailed this one. OK, now we can almost get to actually uh, making this map, but we've been uh, working on this uh, for over a month now and that means we got another form of update because as we're making the map tim barton our artist is also uh adding to the map itself he's adding new stuff so this is the let's actually get rid of everything here let's uh this is the map as it appeared last time maybe i'll zoom out just a bit further yeah, let's go a bit let's go again and here are all the additions our man Tim has made. So a lot of stuff going on around the Indian arm. Some new uh, lighting going on in the nebula here. More emphasis on this orangey part. New cool, like I, I'm always finding new details whenever I look over this stuff. I, I get lost looking at this map, but uh, a lot of new little stuff. Uh, Tim was watching along as we were streaming, so he was adding stuff to the parts of the map while we were working on it, which is very cool. Some other major stuff added. There's more detail in the Brazilian or the Amazonian, whatever we're calling this thing, the, uh, what is this? The Amazonia cluster. So now it looks like this. We got some detail in the center. Before, it looked like this. So a lot of cool little details. One thing Tim is doing, which I really love, is he takes these kind of like arches that exist and he adds even more definitions so a lot of stuff getting added to this map we are still at the start of this process and moving into the sea of clouds it feels like a weather report moving into the sea of clouds um some more detail was added to the american section here and just some cool lighting effects everywhere so yeah even though oh wait there's also a lot of stuff going on over here this is pretty sweet too the, uh, we said this was the, um, where New London is, or whatever we're calling the, the British star systems. And, uh, these got a lot more definition in the latest update. So, yeah. The map is not done. Don't think for a second you're looking at the final product here, because, uh, we got a lot to do. And I can see the super chats coming in. Thank you so much, guys. I will be getting to those whenever the next natural break is, which... I guess is right now. So, all right, that works. And I get to test out my new, uh, my new system here. So how do I do this? All right. Uh, Emerald Hunter ask in, and thank you very much for the super chats, by the way, Th these are very much appreciated. Uh, this is an expensive project. So anything that helps us fund it is, uh, 
uh, yeah, I, I really appreciate it. It's, it's great. So, Emerald Hunter asking, will AI be prevalent in DOV? Will some countries use it more than others? Good question. So, I've been thinking about this a lot recently, and I think AI is ubiquitous in this universe. I think pretty much everything has some sort of AI, but not uh, in the Halo sense where it's, you know, some blue lady you fall in love with. Rather, I think just everything has its own version of ChatGPT that works as advertised as opposed to the current version. So that's that's kind of my thinking where AI is in everything, but it's not personified. It's not made in the likeness of humans. It's just really good software and it's not necessarily self-aware. So maybe that doesn't even qualify as AI. Uh, by your definition, but that's my thinking anyways. All right, moving on. Sorry I can't spend more time answering these questions. These are all great, but I still gotta make the map. Uh, Azura, thanks for the super chat, asking, wanted to give you some support, thank you very much. Your old Dawn of Victory map gave me some epic inspiration for my own ongoing project in this new series. It's nice to reference see, to see how people do stuff differently. Epic work. Well, thank you very much. That is the intent uh, of the series is to, like there's a lot of videos on, on YouTube that sh like talk about world building and talk about what you should do and what you shouldn't do, but not a lot of videos of people actually going through it, so hopefully this helps with, with somebody. And no stripe 361 saying, can the strings only connect star systems or can they reach stuff like rogue planets and nebulas? Any deep space facilities, can you make a gravity well to create a synthetic strings? These are all good questions. So, can strings only connect star systems? I would say that anything with mass is going to be connected by a string and i don't know this is a good question like maybe like there's also just some like random strings where you know most of them are between gravity wells but there's a couple that just kind of went off into nowhere that you can maybe follow haven't really thought about that too much but that's a a good one but yeah if there's like a rogue planet or something there's probably some sort of string a weaker one maybe leading there but these are good questions to consider uh any deep space facilities yes so because uh, you're not likely to make an entire jump or an, an entire string in one jump, uh, some deep space facilities have just kind of emerged at uh, different places along the most popular lines. So when there's a whole bunch of traffic heading between... Wait, how come these are called Independence in Brazil still? Didn't I change these? I hope this isn't a older version of the map because that would suck, but whatever, I'll... Uh, cross-reference with the website, whatever. Uh, but as I was saying, particularly uh, popular cosmic strings with a lot of traffic might have deep space facilities along the way, just like, you know, interstellar gas stations to get some food, clean showers, that kind of thing. Alrighty, but uh, let's actually get to the map uh, making, oh wait, there's more. Uh, all right, I'll get through these last few super chats and then I gotta actually make this map. <laughs> Blue Space asking, what's the status of Earth? Is it regarded as a place of memory with a memorial site, or do the DOV nations even really care? So, people are caring about Earth less and less, uh, but it's still out there. It's quarantined. Uh, Alpha Centauri is in charge of the sole quarantine, but all the superpowers are involved to one extent or another. Uh, f traffic to the solar system is pretty much locked off. You're not getting in, but... Uh, pilgrims and historians and just people who feel very strongly about soul are allowed in the system on kind of specialized trips. Uh, it's kind of like just a, a pilgrimage, I guess, is the best way to explain it. You get to Earth, you don't get to go on the planet, but you get to hang out in orbit, so that's that. Uh, Joshua JN asking, will we have any isolated systems not connected to any strings? Yes, absolutely. Uh, right now we're kind of working in the core. Like, this is where the cosmic strings have been heavily surveyed, but there's probably going to be some some systems out of the network in the uh, Dekwanga De 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 deeps, and a whole ton in the frontier, which is over here someplace. So, yes, there will be. Okay, any more super chats that I... Okay, there we go. Uh, yeah. Perfect. Okay. Time to actually get to the uh, the building part of this. So, my apologies, not going to be paying attention to chat. Actually, you know what? Before we can get to that, one other thing I wanted to mention. So, we put out, uh, I think, two bounties last time. One was for uh, names for the Brazilian systems, and the other was for the name of this thing. 
Uh, I called it a stellar nursery last stream. I found out the official title for these things is Molecular Cloud Complex, which sounds uh, rad as hell. I got a bunch of um, great name suggestions for this one, and someone suggested um, the Floating Gardens as a reference to the, the Hanging Gardens. And I kind of liked Hanging Gardens, just not doing the floating thing, but just using the original Hanging Gardens. So I was I was going that way. And then Tim uh, Barton, the guy doing the, the art uh, for the map here, he uh, put a suggestion in that, uh, that uh, document too. He suggested the Orchard, the Orchard Stellar Nursery. Uh, so it was kind of down to those two, and both had a kind of garden theme to them, so there was something there. But then... Uh, someone else, let me get the name here. Uh, Catherine, I think. Is that right? Yeah, Catherine suggested the Well of Embers. And at first I was like, that's a bit too dramatic, but I kept thinking about it. And the Well of Embers just seems like what you would call this. So I think it's going to be called the Well of Embers. So thanks to Catherine for suggesting that one. I am going to add the name. Well of Embers. Let's get that aligned. I'll come back to this in the future to make sure everything's perfect, but for now, there it is. The Well of Embers. Makes sense to me. I mean, that's what I see when I look into this thing. So, thank you to everyone for your suggestions, but uh, I think Well of Embers takes it. Okay. Now to the actual building of the star map. So we're really building three things when we're working on this. The first is like, you know, the basic routes, like how do you get from Sigma to Draconis to Independent? And I know I renamed these, so this is probably is a slightly older version of the map, whatever. Uh, but the second thing we're building is kind of the vibe. I want each region to have its own unique character. But the third thing we're building, and the one I want to focus on today, are geopolitical relationships. So, uh, the big powers in the local cluster are we got uh, Brazil, we got India, we got Alpha Centauri, and then they got, you know, Italy, Argentina over here. But, back in the early days, when the local cluster was still uh, largely unexplored, and the evacuation of Earth was ongoing, there was one planet in particular called Vega, that was very important. How do I unlock this? There we go. So, Vega is somewhere around here, and I'll tell you the story of Vega. See, there was a whole bunch of planets not affiliated with the superpowers that were colonized during the early days. Alpha Centauri is one, Sirius is one, Tau Ceti is another. And these are all independent planets settled by, you know, corporate interests, independent organizations, not associated with anybody. And Vega, let's rename it actually, Vega is the big success story. Uh, this is the colony that's doing really well, uh, it's looking like everything's coming together, they have a whole new society that's all, everything's working out great. But Vega kind of looks at what's happening in the, in the local cluster. Once the evacuation is done, Earth is gone, Vega's alone, surrounded by all these other colonies. The superpowers are busy dealing with their own stuff, and, and Vega kind of sees the chance to... This is a long story, maybe I shouldn't go all over all of it during the stream, but... Um, basically, Vega sees a chance to define what the future of the Orion Arm is going to look like in a way that's favorable to Vega and other smaller countries like it, so they embark on a couple wars. It doesn't go well, and now Vega is separated. And not only is it uh, separated, but it's the new point of confrontation between the Soviet Union and the German Reich. So if you're taking bets on where is the next war going to start, a lot of folks would uh, would say Vega. So I want to kind of, I want to build up this area of the map is what I'm trying to say. So let's go from Cygnus to Epsilon Eridani. And again, not going to worry about names this stream. I liked the setup of just putting down star systems first, coming up with names later and taking suggestions and all that. So, well, let's focus on Vega. So I want Vega, something like this. I know Vega is in a cluster. 
because it needs to have a bunch of planets uh, part of the nation. Uh, Turbocharge 37 saying, Space Korean War. Yes, I have been reading up on the Korean War a whole bunch lately. And, uh, man, that is a interesting conflict. There is wild stuff happening in the Korean War that I had no idea about. All right, so... But I do want to have that uh, that south and, and north kind of divide. So I want like a bunch of star systems over here, a bunch of star systems over here, and then Vegas kind of the link between them. So maybe this should be a bit further out. But yeah, that's probably fine. Oh, you know what I just realized? So these are not independent. These are. Let's use Japan, just for a temporary one. We'll get a... Not gross orange color, yeah, or yellow gold, good enough. And this is... West Vega. Again, that is a temporary name. I am just trying to figure out which star systems belong to, what did I just do? Which star systems belich, uh, belong to which Vega? Okay, so we got some West Vega over here. It's not a, it's not a huge empire, like it's certainly not the same size as India, but it uh, used to be kind of substantial. Something like that. I like Vega as a star name, but the problem is, as soon as you, like, ask the question, what do people from Vega call themselves, it reads like vegan, and that really sucks the drama out of your science fiction universe. Okay. Except they should not be using the Japanese uh, color, because that's going to confuse me in the future. So let's... There, alright, that's ugly looking. Let's, uh... Alright, good enough. Again, this is temporary. Don't judge me on my color choices. And thank you all so much for the super chats coming in. I will get to them, just trying to actually make some progress on this map first. Something like this. All right, I said I wasn't gonna take questions, but uh, this is a good one. Uh, and I just lost it because chat is moving so fast. All right, um, Wretched Lord was asking which cultures settled Vega. So all of them is the main answer. Um, there's a few star systems that, you know, no one ethnic group or no one culture has more than a sliver of the uh, total population. So, you know, it's, the largest cultural group is 5% of the total population, so it's a real it's a real melting pot. And one of the reasons why Vega was so successful is because on some planets, you know, you have refugees from all over and society just collapse, uh, collapses. But on Vega, the process of bringing together all these disparate people and creating a new planetary national identity out of that was really successful. So Vega was seen as this model of what new interstellar colonies with no relation to Earth might look like. Alrighty, how do I hide comments? There we go. And man, I hate Illustrator. I can never, it never does what I want it to do. And I know it's my fault. I know Illustrator is a good, a good program, but, uh... Oh, so we got a didgeridoo going. That's kind of good. Okay. I feel like East Vega is a bit too spread out compared to West Vega. 
What if I just did this? Because uh, East Vega is way bigger than West Vega. Also, why isn't it copying the whole thing? It's because I didn't group this one. Yes. Yeah, that looks about right. I still don't think East Vega looks as cool as I want it to. I don't know why. The answer might be for Tim to come in and add some cool nebula stuff around here, but uh, let's, uh, let's keep going. And I'll answer some more questions while I'm kind of figuring stuff out in my head here. Uh, if I can figure out how to do that. Uh, Nathan Boyce asking, is East Vega aligned with the Axis? Yes, it is. Grey Guardian asking, is Vega like East and West Germany? Uh, yes, it is. Or, you know, North and South uh, Korea, whatever you prefer. Okay, so let's actually get the, uh, the star lanes going now. And this is where my lack of illustrator knowledge really shows, because I'm always screwing this part up. Come on, where's the center, you son of a bitch? There we are. <laughs> I got ya. Okay, there we are. Wait, how do I want to do this? Because I'm, I'm doing this kind of willy-nilly. I want Vega to be like the connecting point. Let's add actually more bit of West Vega. They're looking a little underpowered. Something like that. Okay, then in that case, I don't like having East Vega there. But I do like Vega being the connecting point, so let's figure that out. So Vega is going from here to here to here, we'll say is the main route. I have to put it on the wrong layer. God damn you, Illustrator, you test me at every possible chance. All right, good enough for now. Something like this. This still isn't quite looking the way I wanted it to, so I might have to come back to this and mess around with the shapes. But for now, it's good to just kind of figure it out and see what, uh... What's gonna stick, you know? Maybe I don't make these planets conform to the nebula so much. Maybe I move them closer? Like, will that make this look a bit more? Because I want it to have that, like, that strong divide, right? Where Vega is, like, this clear delineation between the two sides. And I don't think I have that quite yet. Like, when you see this from a distance, does Vega look like it's... kind of the, the, the center of this border kind of skirmish kind of area? I don't know. I don't think it's quite there. But before we worry about that too much, let's figure out how people are actually getting to this place. So... There is a major cosmic string that goes to kind of this northern area that the Germans use to get where they're heading. 
And is Vega on that line? I guess it is, because Vega is an important place, so it would probably be on a strong cosmic string. Is it really that simple? Is that how long it takes to get there? Nah. Let's add another independent group of systems. But let's not call it that. Okay. Something like this, maybe. Well, I kind of like this idea. What if it uh, takes like a long detour over here? Something like this. Yeah, that's a bit too much, but I think there's something here. Okay, getting a bit closer. This still feels a little fake to me, I don't know why. But, uh, actually, you know, the placement of these star systems is growing on me. Except this placement here doesn't make too much sense, because why would this be part of East Vega if it could only get to... If there's no direct connection to any other East Vega place, that wouldn't work in the long term. Something like that. Yeah, that actually is a big improvement. I like having this, this axis here. That makes it stand out a lot more. Okay, yeah, that's that's looking solid. I like that a lot better. That was a simple change, but I like that. So now West Vegas really fucked. Uh, let's uh, let's give them like something. Something like that, maybe. Yeah. This is signaling to me that India needs more star systems, though. Because Vega, like, the number of star systems shouldn't, like, correspond too much to, uh, to how powerful the country is. But in terms of India, for how massive the population is, I feel like they need more star systems to, to really reflect their major power status. Whereas Vega is like barely, well, West Vega is probably a regional power, middle power, East Vega, definitely a regional power. But uh, I kind of like the idea of having some more Indian colonies throughout these these little nebula shapes. I don't know. Might come back to this, but I'm liking that. Okay. Now the problem is, the route going to Vega needs to be like an express lane for the lore to work here. And this feels like it's too much of a trek to get there. So let's do this. How does Illustrator work? Okay, there we go. Something like this, but then like that. 
That reduces the number of connect. Maybe we don't need this one. This one, I, I kind of like this at the start. I don't know if I like that idea now. Okay, what am I doing? How do I delete this anchor? Anchor be gone. All right, to hell with that. Damn you, illustrator. Damn you so much. You're making me look like a fool in front of 346 people. Good lord. Okay. Did it. So, yeah, I think the main line has to go through Vega. But then... Hmm. So my thinking is, the main transit route currently goes through West Vega and East Vega, so maybe it goes this way or something, but then that adds some interesting dynamics here. I'm not really sure how to fix this problem, or if I even explained it correctly. Like, hmm. What if it worked like this? I think this is the solution. What if it did like... Okay, okay, I think I got this. So the main link goes through Vega. And then each of the two sides kind of branches out from that. And then this continues northward into uh, German territory. Something like that. I don't hate this idea. I don't want to bring back my uh, crooked Starline idea again. Something like that. Okay, it needs uh, it needs work, but uh, I think we're getting somewhere. Except, like, both of these countries need a way out. <laughs> it's like if East Germany and West Germany could only exit through Berlin, like, that would cause a problem. So, I'm gonna have to add some more links, like, going out uh, in this direction and in this direction, but for now... I kind of don't hate this dynamic. So that might be the indicator to uh, read some more chats, and I feel like there's been a ton since uh, I last did it. So let me just catch up here. Sorry, folks. There is only one of me, so... Uh... Okay, here we go. So, uh, Tynan Dugdale asking, how cheap is bulk shipping? Does it allow a globalist economy where stuff gets shipped to three quarters places in manufacturing? Or is it early colonial, only luxuries are worth getting shipped style deal? I haven't thought about too much about the economics side of things. I am not an economically minded person. I'm new media, so I don't know how to make money. But I do know that globalism is not a thing. Uh, transit between the star lanes just takes too long for uh, a globalist economy to really work that well. So, you know, you're not getting two-day shipping from the Sea of Clouds to the local cluster, let alone, you know, from one end of the Orion Arm to the other. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why capitalism and democracy is kind of on the back foot in the Orion Arm, simply because uh, transit is so long, so commercial uh, incentives aren't as powerful. That's the thinking, anyways. Again, I'm not an economy expert, so... That'll be something we develop uh, uh, over time. And then Elaine Voiland asking for QC, how about a single harsh world or area located at an important X road or holding something, uh, dollar signs, I assume economically viable. Can't live with them, can't live without them. So yeah, the idea is to create a whole bunch of, of choke points where um, I think what you're talking about is something like 
Sigma Draconis, which has no planets itself, but is in such a critical location that it becomes uh, incredibly important. And then Kai Ka or C Ka maybe. Thanks for the super chats, everyone. By the way, thank you, <laughs> very much appreciated. Saying, uh, you said the different factions had different engine optimizations and were therefore better at using different cosmic strengths. Yes, that is something I forgot to add to my explanation. Mostly because I couldn't figure out how to make different colored strings. Like, like, why are they all? Why did that one? Okay, I can do this. FTL. That one's. Why is? It... They're starting off white, and they're becoming like... Oh, because their opacity is 33? Yeah. Wait, is this why? Have I figured this out? Okay, hold on. Yes, okay, so... Uh, there are different kinds of cosmic strings. Not all of them are equal. So, to optimize your engines towards different cosmic strings, sometimes this involves like building them in specific ways or using different software. So, the end result, basically what I'm trying to say is... Different countries have different engines that can utilize cosmic strings uh, more effectively. So Soviet ships might be better along certain routes, American ships along others. So thank you for reminding me about that. And actually for the question uh, you asked, is this because of range, speed, cooldown, access, or something else? Um, don't really have an explanation for it quite yet. I think it's just because the, the way in my head, like you don't just find a cosmic string and you're able to use it. I think there's a period where you kind of have to survey it. You got to like send like a ship like a little of the way down to kind of like, I don't know, map the string or, or do something science related, you know? So you're slowly mapping these strings and some are harder to map than others. And the Americans mapped out, you know, this whole area here, ran into this planet, couldn't get through it, ended up going this way instead. Whereas the Soviets broke through here, so I don't know if I answered that question at all, but uh, Cosmic strings are different and some countries are just better able to Unlock certain kinds of strings and others. I, it's a lame explanation I know it's one I'm developing over the course of, of the series here So hopefully I'll have a better answer to that question uh, in a bit and Biz asking, will there be more planets in India and Brazil? Yes, but probably not a lot more I think, how many did we have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, I, I think uh, that's that feels about right for a major power that's not the superpowers. India has a lot of people, but they kind of got the short end of the stick when they were expanding into the Orion Arms. So, yeah, eh, a bit more maybe, but not a whole ton more. I think we're pretty close to where I want them. And Elaine Volant saying, uh, suggestion, Vega and UFO Robert Greta. I don't understand this one, but thank you for the super chat, nevertheless. And Emerald Hunter saying, I'm assuming that there are regular religions, but will there be any secret religions that are trying to control some outcomes in their favor from the superpowers? Uh, secret religions, like weird cults and stuff? Yes. Uh, I don't want to talk too much about that though because number one I don't have too much planned but also because I got some secret stuff bare bones so uh the short answer is yes and Stratego asking to uh do what degree is the USSR suffering from the issues which led to its in real life collapse to what degree did it manage to reform I like to think that the USSR in, in Dawn of Victory it goes through phases where there's different wings to the Communist Party where you have like the hardliners and the reformists and you know a bunch of others and it's kind of like just going through periods of decline followed by periods of reform followed by periods of decline kind of like that dynamic that existed between Khrushchev and Brezhnev and you know all those rotating premiers so I, I guess like at certain points of its history it's come closer to collapse than others but right now at least it's pretty good. <laughs> Sorry, that's about as much as I've, I've thought about that, but that's a, that's a great question. Okay, so uh, Commando asking, so what's the population of the Orion Arm? Still working on this. Uh, I don't think we have... I, I, I might have actually talked about this last stream, so I'm going to ask this, but uh, the number in my head is that I want the Orion Arm to be uh, heading towards 100 billion people. I think it'd be like a cool plot point if that was like on the horizon where like right now they're at, you know, 97 billion or whatever. So on the road to 100, 
maybe we'll, we'll see if that makes any sense uh i think we can justify that in 250 years with certain uh, accommodations but you never know all right so moving on Alex Kier, Alex Kerr, either way, saying, is space combat and DOV centered around more big capital ships or smaller, nimbler craft? So space combat, and this is such a great question. So a lot of these are going to tie into future episodes of the way of world building. I have like so much to say about space combat, not in DOV specifically, but just in, in science fiction in general. And one thing I hate is that like in Star Wars, for example, space combat is just this thing that like happens it's just like oh we're doing space combat now and every space combat is kind of the same right whereas in real history you know naval combat in 1800 looks different from naval combat now uh naval combat between two regional powers looks different than naval combat between you know a smaller nation and a larger one so in dawn of victory it's the same thing where there is no standard space combat space combat is um it's different depending on who's fighting and where and what's going on. So sure, there's sometimes big capital ships, but other times there's smaller craft. And the crazy thing that I think is kind of cool in the, in the lore is that no one knows what space combat is going to look like when the superpowers go at it. Because so far, the biggest fights that have happened have been like a great power against like a smaller power or maybe two regional powers going at it. The superpowers have never fought each other directly, but they're about to and no one knows what that's actually uh, going to look like. So, sorry, I'm spending too much time talking about this stuff. A lot of Super Chats coming in, but uh, that's, a, that's a fun fun question. I'll, I'll do my best to, to move along here. Uh, Jacob Mueller, are you considering doing any flag contests for nations? Yes, I'd love to do this. The, the only problem is I, I don't want to be a jerk here because we're, we're selling Dawn of Victory merchandise, right? Like, the plan is to eventually uh, sell, like, uh, posters of this map to help finance the series. So if people are donating their work and their ideas to us, and then we're monetizing that, like it feels kind of gross. So I just want to know a, like, a, a good way to handle that before we announce anything, because uh, I don't want to rip people off, but at the same time, we have a small budget. So I don't know, what can we do? Okay, uh, the skip, so many super chats, guys. Thank you so much. I'll do my best to, to start, stop taking so long answering each one. Um, can we get a bounty for FTL travel ideas? Uh, I'm not quite sure what you mean, but probably no. That's too important to be left to a bounty. Like, bounties are, uh, at the end of the day, they can't be that important to the setting just because I need to maintain my artistic vision or whatever. I don't know. Uh, is there a limit to how small an FTL ship can be? Yes, I don't think fighters like if, if a fighter has an FTL drive, it's probably being operated by uh, NASA if it still exists. Like that would be experimental, like top of the line tech. Uh, whereas like a bigger ship like uh, the Serenity from Firefly or the Mandalorian Razor Crest, I think that kind of stuff would have an FTL thing in it or the DOV equivalent. Okay, uh, how has the British Army changed in DOV? <laughs> so, uh, this is something we're actually talking about right now, so your timing is great. It's bigger than it is in real life, that's for sure. Every army in DOV is huge compared to, to real life because they're at the tail, or they're at the, uh, they're in the middle of this Cold War. But, uh, I don't want to announce anything yet because it's still in the works, but if you're wondering what infantry looks like in DOV, we'll have stuff to show you. And if you're wondering how uh, armies and stuff are organized, we'll have a ton of stuff to tell you we're working with cool people who know more than me so that's all i can say blue space saying so is there some sort of galactic wide equivalent to the internet or does every planet just have its own network how does interplanetary communications work so i think we talked about this one last stream too not entirely sure yet i think that uh, instantaneous communication is possible it's just not uh it's, it's only for top tier businesses government leaders it's too expensive to be ubiquitous so for most people Internet is probably contained to your star system. There's no interstellar internet unless you're waiting hours for it to process or paying more. I don't know. So that's a good question. I don't have an answer. And man, these super chats are, are happening fast and furious. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get back to to editing and we'll uh, we'll pick up the super chats uh, in a bit here. But thank you so much. I gotta clear all these. These are way uh, incredibly generous, everybody. Thank you so much. Um, this is a good problem to have. 
Okay, so actually back to the map. Okay, so I kind of want to keep working on this area just because I'm liking it. I don't love the, the entrance to the Vega system. I feel like it's too boring looking, but that's kind of coming together. Yeah, and I like that too. Oof, okay, that's not gonna work. Hmm. As I was saying, you know, some of this is like graphic design, some of it's map making, some of it's figuring out lore. It's a weird blend of, of skills, I guess, when you're making a star map. Okay, now I just need to make sure I didn't make an accidental swastika, because that would be bad. I don't see anything that looks offensive, so we're probably set there. Okay. Oh, turbocharge is a good question. Can there be... F I'm answering too many questions. Sorry, but this is a good one. Can there be forks in strings? I would say no. Because I think that strings aren't actually these these lines. I think strings look more like this, right? So you have like, ah, oh, damn you. Star system one is over here. Eh. Star system one is over here. Star system two is over here. And the string isn't actually a string. The string is more like, uh, I don't know, like amounts of particles where it's like it starts off super strong. Like, I've just invented a wormhole, I think, here, haven't I? That's kind of what this looks like. What I'm trying to say is like, the cosmic string particles or whatever the hell is making FTL work is super strong in these areas and it gets weaker in the center. So it's not an actual uh, line. I hope that answers the question. I already forgot what it was. I talk too much. Okay, so Vega, that's coming together. But you know, I feel like it's taken up too much space on the map, like, Vega isn't a huge, like, it used to be big, but it's not quite in as much anymore. I kind of want to just condense this a bit to make it feel less dominant on the map, you know? Like, it, it took over a cluster. It was not a huge power spanning a big part of the galaxy, you know? It's a bit smaller than that. And I think it's East Vega that's causing most of the issues. Yeah, that feels a bit better. I was seeing a lot of comments in chat with people on the side of West Vega and East Vega. Is there a general preference for one of the, over the other? Like, has chat taken a side or is chat divided? That's what I want to know. All right, that's good enough. I think that's kind of working for me. But you know what? I'm going to get bored of that section. Let's go somewhere else. Let's keep going down the side over here. I said that uh, I wanted each kind of region to have its own tone or vibe or or mood. And the uh, Duwanga Deeps is supposed to be like the uh, Bermuda Triangle where there's like very few star systems in the middle of it, but there's a kind of a periphery. And I feel like this is also maybe not like pirate territory, but it's it's not like it's a little rough in the Dewanga Deeps. Like, I think the Escruzahada, Escruzahada? And Cruzahada. It's probably a rough, a rough place to, to get some work if you're a freelancer. Okay, but let's work on this section. Let's add some, some more star systems along here. And I kind of want to just conform them to the side of the, the nebula here, because I think it looks so good. Something like that, maybe. I 
That feels a bit too much like it's conforming to the nebula. That, that feels a bit too faint. Let's uh, maybe have it just cross there a bit. Yeah, that looks good. Also working on the route to get into America, but I feel like I'll stick on this side of things a bit more. So any fans of uh, the original incarnation of Donna Victory will know that uh, we had a, a nation called New New Canaan. New Canaan, yeah. And it controlled the access to the New Canaan Corridor, which is a very important trade route in old DOV. Well, it exists in New DOV 2, and you can see a very small portion of the New Canaan Corridor uh, right over here. So I feel like I'm going to work on the entrance to that. So, here we go. New Canaan. And New Canaan, like Vega, probably one of those colonies that doesn't have a... Uh, it, it probably... It's people are from all over. One of those countries without a strong ethnic or cultural background. It's a bit of everybody. So if New Canaan is there, how do we get there? The problem with this, this map is that it's so beautiful, I want to put star systems everywhere. Like, it, it feels so uh, cool to have, like, a couple, like, independent colonies just hanging out in the deeps. Come on, Illustrator. I know how to do this. Okay, I will figure this out eventually. There we go, there we go. Turn off the fill. Perfect. I got there eventually. Man, this area here looks really cool. I, I, I like this zone a lot. This is... This is good. Something like this, perhaps? So I said that uh, some star systems wouldn't be connected by strings. Maybe this is one of them? Like, are these good candidates for, for strings without, uh, or systems without strings? Maybe there's just a couple out there, like... Something like that. Do I like that? I don't know if I like that. Okay, but I knew that that's too far of a jump. Let's get one closer to home. And we'll get another one. I, I like this, um... I don't know what it is. I like putting star systems on the edge of these little nebula shapes that, that Tim makes. It just, it feels like it makes sense that there should be a star system there, you know, just hanging out. Like, it just, it looks right. And I also feel like it should be more kind of following this trail here. That looks so cool. Something like this, maybe. Damn it, the wrong layer strikes again. I am trying to put stuff on star lanes. From there to there. It didn't work because it hates me. Okay, there we go. Hmm. 
It feels too zigzag, yeah. I gotta add more clusters as opposed to this, like, this current bullshit. But I think this part looks good. It comes, it kind of falls apart over here. That looks a little less interesting, but uh, it feels a bit more right. I don't know. That seems like it's probably good. What if I put it over here? This over here. Sorry, I, I try to save a lot of the minutia to, to off stream here, but I don't know what it is. This one's just kind of speaking to me about how to make this look good. Okay. And then we'll start the uh, entrance into the new Canaan Corridor over here. Okay, that's not terrible. I feel like this segment still needs some work. I think I could buy that, okay. So that's there. There needs to be something in here. I think um, there's probably going to be another regional power somewhere in here. Possibly the East African uh, Federation, possibly Nigeria, possibly... I mean, there's a whole bunch of candidates. So... Gonna have to think about that one. Maybe Turkey. I think I, I said I wanted Turkey to control the uh, a vital choke point again, just for historical... irony or rhyming or, or something. So yeah, there's a big state somewhere in there. Not sure who, though. Okay. What do we work on next? I kind of want to keep doing independent planets here. Maybe work on the local cluster some more. Let's, let's actually keep going over here. So... Vesta right now is kind of trapped. I want to get them away to get into the solar kind of area without needing to go through this, like, they need another route through here somewhere. Somewhere for Sirius and, and Vesta to interact. And let's take a couple questions here. Uh, e. Zane saying, oddly high number of independent systems. So, when we say a, a system is independent, we don't mean that, like, there is an independent nation there. There could be or it could be completely empty. Maybe I need another indicator on the map to differentiate that, but the idea is that, like, there's probably zero people living in Wolf 359, for example, permanently. There might be a few stations, but there is no country in Wolf 359. So that's the idea anyways. Uh, if it's just a dot or independent, there's a small colony, or uh, maybe multiple, yeah, small colony, or uh, no permanent settlement. Okay. That just seemed like a good question. So here we got the Vega cluster. In fact, let's uh Now I know this is an older version of the map because it's missing some other titles here. I'll have to merge these after the stream, but uh, Nature of the Beast, I guess. Okay, well, let's get that independent section going over here. Something like that.
I just ruined Sirius. There we go. What am I doing? Let's group those together, put them here. So the idea is that uh, Vesta and Sirius are kind of rivals in the local cluster. But to interact, they need a way to actually connect with one another, and right now they're lacking that, so that's what I'm kind of working on here. Something like like this, where Veritas connects to Independent, which gets us to here. Something like that, maybe? Except I kind of hate the look of that. I still don't love the look of this, but it's a bit better. What looks good? What looks good? Maybe it's like that. I kind of like this actually. Is that is that something? Yeah. That might be something. All right, good enough for now. So one question that I've encountered, and I'm not sure what the right answer here is, do we try to indicate the strength of cosmic strings on the map by making, you know, stronger strings thicker than weaker strings. Like, is that gonna look good, or is that gonna look lame? So let's just do a test here. Actually, what I what if I did this? So right now it's at two pixels. What if I did four? Like, does that look cool, like having a mix of, of string widths? Like, or, or does this seem too cluttered? I, I, I don't hate this. I think this kind of works. Yeah, I think that actually might might work. Although I don't love that they're almost as wide as the planets. That kind of looks lame. Oh well, food for thought. We might come back to that. When you're making a, a, a map, whether it's fantasy, sci-fi, whatever, there's a urge to put as much stuff as possible into the map. But you do that, you're gonna end up with a mess. Like right now, this looks clean. And I don't want to lose this, like, clean feeling, if it is indeed what we got here. But uh, at the same time, you want to add some stuff that people can latch on to. Okay, let's keep moving down the Dwanga Deeps here. I feel like this is freelancer territory. Or if you're looking to make a good score or a good killing out in the black, you pick up some jobs around here. Yeah, that's kind of coming together. I hope uh, people don't mind the slower paced, chill vibe to these streams, but uh, map making is like, it ain't exactly uh, Overwatch, right? Counter-Strike, League of Legends. In terms of clicks per minute, not a whole ton, but going slow is the, the way to victory, so. Sometimes it's helpful just to stand back and look at this sucker. See how it feels, you know? 
I kind of like this area. I feel like, or, uh, like this uh, place turned out pretty cool looking. Still not exactly sold on like this connection though to this little cluster over here. But I just, I want a way for Sirius and Vesta to interact because those two don't love each other. And if it feels like Sirius and Vesta are like competing for this cluster and this cluster and that looks pretty good to me. I think that's growing on me. I think I like the way this is looking. Okay, cool. The other thing I gotta consider though is in terms of major strings, we got one going, how do I make a new layer? We got one going, we're solar. So we got one going this way. That's like the German string. We got one going, that's the Soviet slash Japanese string. The American one is here. So did the Japanese use the Soviet one and like split off like somewhere around here? Or did the Japanese go down here? I guess what I'm thinking is I want uh, this area here to be really important for trade. Which would mean that you would want it to like uh, it, sh it should be faster to get there, right? Like there's so many different star systems you got to get through. This feels like it'd be a slow trip. Is, is my problem, whereas this is supposed to be like a big trade lane. But maybe the trade lane from here to here isn't as important as the trade lane from there to there. Like maybe the New Canaan Corridor links America and this place as opposed to the solar sector. Stuff to think about. And plus I just wrecked something, I don't know what that's doing there. Wait, did I just like break a bunch of stuff? Where did all this stuff come from? Oh, those are the notes I made, I see. Okay, I'll figure this out. Hurrah. Uh, Alex on the fly in chat saying, this map reminds me of the game Freelancer. That is a high compliment. I love Freelancer, that game's great. I think what it's coming down to is there's too many, too many jump lanes down here. Like this looks too convoluted for what this is supposed to be. I think I gotta simplify this. So let's uh, let's not start from scratch, but let's figure out a way to like get this going a bit faster. So there to there, that's a pretty straight shot. Dionysus to somewhere else. Okay, that seems a bit cleaner. Okay, so. There, 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 there. Yeah, that's a bit better. And then from here, we add the clusters onto the main line as opposed to starting out kind of haphazard.
connect those. Okay, I'm. <laughs> Come on, Illustrator, just give me a break. So I feel like if there is a big country in here somewhere, the entrance to it, probably like one through here and then one through there. And there's a cluster in there somewhere. Don't hate that idea at all. Although I don't know what country it's going to be and it feels weird to, to build a bunch of star systems without knowing what nation they're a part of. So maybe I'll save that for next stream. We'll figure out what we're doing here. Okay, let's keep going around the periphery here, I think. Something like that. The idea is it'll kind of link up around here and then go into America and the Sea of Clouds. So I, I really want the uh, the new Canaan, new Canaan corridor to be uh, like an important part of the setting. And I feel like there's gotta be multiple routes through the corridor, like Maybe there's the shortest one that's the most dangerous and a slightly longer one that's more reliable. Food for thought. All right, Vega, what are we gonna do about you? Well, I'm out of ideas, so let's move on to Argentina. And let's see if I can't also make them a roundel real quick while I'm at it. Okay, what color are you, Argentina? This blue color, got ya. Except it's ruined it, didn't I? I swear I will figure this out eventually. I'm just bad at Illustrator, so apologies. There we go. Okay. I'm moving places. Nailed it. Look at that. Perfect. Perfect. And let's add that to the list. Okay, Argentina, you got a whole arm to yourself, but you're not quite the uh, equal of Brazil in terms of total number of star systems, so you're probably concentrated just to one section of the Argentine arm, which I think is probably going to be around here because it looks the coolest. Something like that. Maybe Argentina is very spread out. They wanted their own arm, regardless of the consequences.
Yeah, I, I kind of like that idea where there's there's two distinct kind of zones to the Argentine settlements. Something like this, perhaps. Something like this, maybe. I feel like I'm saying that a lot these streams. Yeah, I don't hate that. Not every country needs to have like a massive number of star systems, and I think this kind of looks. Eh, let's give them a couple more, <laughs> just to fill out this this little uh, their arm here. Something like this. Also, this is a good playlist. I'm I'm digging these vibes here. This put it down. There it is. And I think the rest of. Uh, South. Nope, I'm not gonna try to write. I think South America, like the rest, is is here. I think there's probably an independent Chile, somewhere around here, and then a modern reincarnation of Gran Colombia, uh, in here. Gran Colombia, and Chile. And that'll cover a large section of South America. So in the meantime, let's try to build that bridge a bit. So these uh, planets I'm putting down now might be Chile in the future. Something like that, yeah. I feel like Argentina and Brazil probably still rivals in this future. So they need an area to kind of rumble over, you know? And that means the Chile part and the Gran Colombia part and maybe some more independent systems in between. I kind of want every area of the Orion arm to have its own kind of thing going on, right? No section of this map should be the boring section. well I like the look of that that seems very natural that looks that looks solid I don't know why but it does I might mess with this section just to see if that'll add anything does that look better or worse yeah let's keep that <clears throat> okay 
All right, let's get back to the uh, the super chats that I've no doubt missed. Uh, okay, what do we got? Uh, I am Nero asking, what is the government of Poland? Is it like a military dictatorship under a sanitation government? Sanita is that right? Sanitation government? I would imagine the government to be under sort of cult of personality around Joseph, names I can't pronounce, Pilsuduski? Joseph Pilsud... So I'm not a, a, a Polish history expert, so I probably can't give you an answer uh, up, to the sn up to snuff here, but... All I can tell you right now is Poland is. It might not exist in the in the sense that it does currently, but Pol uh, Poland, the Baltic states, and Ukraine have formed a confederacy somewhere around here. Uh, so I think that Poland is probably still a state within that confederacy. We're still working on it. Is, is the long answer, but uh, Poland is in. Don't know what the government's going to be. Probably democratic. I, I think. Uh, the future Polish, Ukrainian, Lithuanian, you know, Baltic State Commonwealth, uh, whatever we're calling it, is going to be uh, democratic, is is the thinking. But we'll see how it goes. Uh, Space Viking Mercenary Guild with the, their own planet? Probably not. Uh, could Norway have a private military corporation that's based on a planet? Yes, but uh, for a mercenary company or a group to have their own planet uh actually you know what I, I take it back it's not impossible that a norwegian pmc could take over their own planet in the frontier in the frontier all bets are off but uh that's about as close as we can get to that and strings are basically like flow strings in the haven game with more steps i'll say yes i have not played haven so don't know. And Big Dog Henry asking, so when is the movie deal? Well, I'll keep it up. I'm loving your work so far. Movie deal coming next year. Dawn of Victory, the movie on Netflix starring uh, Millie Bobby Brown, the Stranger Things girl as Detective Dawn Victory. They changed the script a lot. I, I don't really like the uh, what, what they did with it. Sorry. Okay, oh man, names I can't pronounce. I'm gonna try. Joao Pedro Batista de Souza? God, some of that has to be close, right? Uh, since the setting shifts from uh, reality in the 1930s, will we see an integralist slash fascist Brazil? Since at the time they were led by Guitile, oh, I'm so bad with the names, I apologize. By Vargas, a famous nationalist and a friend of the mustache man. Uh, not sure about Brazil's government. Still working on it. 200 and change in years is a lot of time for things to change. So no nation in Donna Victory is merely the 1930s version thrust into space. There has been 200 years of political change and evolution. So Brazil could go in a number of play uh, ways. I'm not, I'm not sure yet. Uh, Hayden Matthews asking, any ancient Earth nations resurfacing? Uh, not in the same way that they used to exist. Like, I've been calling uh, the Polish nation the, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, but that's just a shorthand. It's probably going to be called something different. So, uh, no direct reincarnations of ancient Earth nations. Like, Italy proclaims that they're the reincarnation of the Roman Empire, but, like, that's just a propaganda thing. They're not actually claiming to be the legal descendant of that state, because why would you? All right. And she hears from the Amazonia Cluster from the Hirokan. Well, thanks. Where are you from in the Amazonia Cluster? It is a great bit of space, so thanks for the super chat. And Big Dog Henry saying, new canon, Space Mormons. You know, we actually had Space Mormons in uh, Dawn of Victory Classic. We put them on a planet called Joseph, I think. But uh, we did that before The Expanse, so those guys ripped me off and probably owe me thousands of dollars in royalties. Timberwolf saying, will the British Dominions like Canada, Australia, and New Zealand be acting as independent states, or they are, or are they just integrated into Britain? So, a bit of both. Uh, Canada no longer exists. It got integrated into Britain. But uh, New Zealand and Australia are part of a new country called Australasia. 
and they have their own capitals over here and Britain is over here so yeah uh, some of them got integrated others still survived in different forms and this part of the map by the way not finished still got to add a shitload of star systems into the sea of clouds but uh, we'll get there right now we're still working on the local cluster I'm spending way too much time answering these questions. I apologize. I had to get through these. Man, I am taking my sweet, sweet time. Was watching from behind, and I just caught your new answer about Greece uh, being in the Axis. Would it not make sense for the country to be aligned with the West, given events in the in real life timeline? Uh, I would need to look more into Greek history. I think in the DOV timeline, Greece gets conquered by the Germans in the 40s, and that's why they're in the Axis. But uh, we haven't really worked on that part of the timeline in super detail. So, you know, take all these answers I'm given with a grain of salt. I, I say Greece is in the axis. Maybe it's not, but uh, that's where we're leaning right now. Anyways, these are just the best answers I have right now. And Tynan uh, Dugdell asking, trade lanes can be slow. Silk Road, cross Saharan, Spice Islands to Europe, even modern international shipping. More systems mean more buyers, sellers. That's true. But I just want, I wanted the New Canaan, New Canaan Corridor to be a kind of like a hotspot, a vital trade lane, as opposed to a massive slog you got to get through. But, uh, all right, I won't be as afraid of adding more systems to the, to the line uh, as we go. Uh, it's a bit weird to have all the South American nations be together in space. None of them went in a different direction. It's honestly a bit surprising that even single nations are this cohesive. So... Yeah, I take your point, and maybe Chile isn't actually over here in the end, but the thinking was that um, the nations of South America probably all bought or all got their FTL drives from the Americans. Um, so American drives work better in this part of the galaxy, so the Brazil and all the South American nations were following the American line, and they split off here, and they got this cluster. So that's kind of the rationale there. Um, when you see a group of nations clustered in the same spot, it's usually because they got their FTL drives from the same same source. Argentina, possibly the outlier. Maybe they got their drives from Germany, but they just happened to also end up over there. I don't know. It's a good point to raise, but I think I have a, a reasonable explanation. Oh, Flintstone asking, would you mind going back to my old super chat? I am sorry, I missed it. Uh, if you type it in regular chat now, I will look for it. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, Blue Space asking, so will there be a galactic like UN? And if so, will there be an intergalactic Court of Justice Hague anti-crime agency like Interpol? Yes, so uh, there's no UN, but we're back to the classics. The League of Nations uh, never fell apart in this timeline. So the League of Nations headquartered on Alpha Centauri, and there's probably an international court there as well. And Interpol, I think, still exists, or though maybe it has a different name. In, in DOV Classic, Interpol was a thing. In this new iteration, maybe it has a different name. And Apollo 1 asking, are nations loca locations affected by past politics on Earth? Would Pakistan intentionally distance itself from India, for example? Uh, so, yes and no. Uh, the Germans and the Soviets went in different directions for a reason. You know, neither of them wanted to be next to each other, and things just kind of worked out that way. But at the same time, like, not every conflict is destined to go on forever. Um, I'm actually thinking of, of, to your example there, of adding Pakistan right there and having Pakistan and India uh, be partners uh, in the future. So some some rivalries continue, others get solved is, is kind of the thinking. Because you don't want to, as much as India and Pakistan have, have uh, a rivalry right now, I don't think there's anything that says that ha that conflict has to go on forever, right? Like, stuff can get fixed. So I hope that uh, answers your question. And Flintstone, let me see if you uh, put anything in chat that I can follow up on. Oh, Flintstone said, you got my old super chat right after I sent up the follow-up chat. Okay, well, hey, as long as it all got uh, sorted out, that's good. Okay, I think that is everybody. So, let's hide the current comment. There we go. And back to work.
And I kind of just want to zoom out again, see how we're looking here. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. The local cluster is probably going to be one of the most dense sections of the Orion Arm in terms of number of star systems, because this is where all of the early exploration took place. The further out you get, I think the more sparse they become. Yeah, something like that. Okay. So let's look for some more opportunities to add star systems. Maybe let's uh, work on this Indian section a bit. Yeah, good enough for now, but I don't love the way that looks. And I also feel like there's, like we're missing something here. Like this, this feels like too barren. I feel like we need another cluster kind of like that. Something like this, maybe. Add some more star systems to the middle of the empty space so we're not conforming to the nebula too much in our placement. Yeah, that's already an improvement. Just to make it look a little less artificial by having these strings just going in a nice, simple line. Yeah, that's looking, that's looking good. I want to work on East Vega. This still doesn't look quite where I want it to be. We've got this nice uh, orange nebula here, and then we've got this purple area. And I feel like that makes for a cool delineation between the two Vegas. So would it be weird if I did this? Like, what if Vega was in the center? Does that ruin everything? Yeah, I guess it kind of does. Let's get this cluster a bit more focused. I think it's too spread out. Maybe just a couple outliers. Yeah, I think that's all right. Although, man, this is like suddenly an incredibly dangerous trade line. Like that is... Can you imagine if the Suez Canal went through like the Korean DMZ? But I, I kind of want that, right? Like you want some, you want some hot spots, you want some powder kegs, you want some places on the map where, like, this is gonna go up at some point, and when it does, it's gonna be a big problem. But right now, I think, I think this is a bit too crazy. I think, like, I need to do something like this.
Like, is that gonna look really out of place? In the terms of how these connections come together? Like, this feels like a very dense connection zone. Compared to the rest of the map. Like, does that look insane? That doesn't look too bad. But let's uh, let's take it back to uh, to that for now. We will revisit this later. The music combined to the artwork, man. This is this is working for me. I am uh, I'm feeling pretty good about how this is all coming together. I mean, God, I think it, I think this is just so beautiful. This is uh, really cool looking. Maybe the Bolivar State is around here. The Grand Columbia. How's that looking? Good? Bad? Half of map making is just making sure these lines look okay. Yes, and that looks okay. And in fact, maybe this connects to here as well. Yeah. I keep seeing references to uh, Pantanal in chat between Argentina and Brazil. I'm not up to date on my South American geography. Is that a... What is that? Mountain range, river, region, city. Please tell me. Cure my ignorance. Patanel, Patanel. It might be pronounced completely differently. How are we looking? Yeah. I hope people don't mind me just chilling out on this map sometimes, but it, it helps to just look at where you'd think some interesting connections can go without rushing into stuff. Like, I kind of like this spiderweb kind of coming out of the, uh, the subcluster here. I kind of want to keep that going. But on the right layer this time. So eventually, we need to kind of have this whole loop going right here, is the plan. And Pantanal is a region within Bolivia and Paraguay. Oh, okay. Is it a hot spot between Argentina and Brazil? What, what, what's the what's the connection I'm missing here? Why, why is everyone yelling at me about Pantanal? Mess with the positioning just a bit here to make this look a bit nicer. Yeah, something like that. Let's 
some more independent systems around the edge of the deeps. And again, most of these will not be uh, inhabited by anybody. These are just like kind of empty systems. Good place to do some mining. Maybe get attacked by pirates, who can say? All right, you know what? We're coming up on uh, two hours here, so I am going to save this and just answer questions for the rest of the, the time we got here. So that's that. The Well of Embers expanded this whole section here, added a bit more down there, added the Argentine arm, some more systems in the local cluster, and the Vega hotspot. A pretty productive stream, I'd say. Okay, but let's get to the uh, the super chats here. What have, what have I missed? Okay. Oops, I forgot to turn on the thing. Uh, better one asking, is YouTube or a white or YouTube analog a thing in DOV land? Uh, yeah, I, I guess so. Although I'd imagine in terms of the internet, there's probably a few different versions of that. So there's probably a few different versions of YouTube as well. There's gotta be a Soviet YouTube that kind of sucks and a German YouTube that has no good content. American YouTube is what it's what it, where it's at, but I don't know what it would be called in this setting. So yes, it exists in multiple variations. Uh, Ceramic saying, will Britain have merchant companies controlling parts of space, kind of like the East India Company or the Hudson's Bay Company? So how megacorps work in DOV is something we need to get into, but um, not directly. So a, a, the British, like a, a British megacorp would not control uh, a company or a, a colony rather to the same extent as the British East India Company. But um, the thing with megacorps is when a megacorp is operating in the local cluster or the deeps or the sea of clouds, like they the limit of what they can get away with is not that high. Like the United States and, and Great Britain and all these other big countries are, are keeping their thumb on megacorps to prevent them from uh, causing any issues. Because uh, in the middle of a Cold War, you don't want your major, major corporations to have too much power. But uh, on the frontier, which is, you know, somewhere around here, megacorps have a lot more freedom because they're operating outside of uh, civilization. So like a British megacorp kind of taking over shit on the frontier. Absolutely, it could happen. I'm not going to say it won't. And Valid Secretor, I'm pronouncing all these names wrong. I'm sorry. If you're familiar with Templin streams, you'll know that I can't pronounce any names. It's just, it's a mess. Uh, so I have to ask, are all these systems inhabited, either planet side or station side, or simply claimed and used for resources, military outposts? So the idea is for a nation to uh, claim a system, they need to have total control over it, or they need to control the systems around it. So uh, this system, for example, might not have any permanent Indian settlements, but because it's surrounded by Indian colonies, it becomes Indian jurisdiction. Whereas systems like Draconis have no permanent colonies, so they're independent. So uh, yeah, no, not every star system is inhabited. Some of them are just, uh, flyover states yeah generally uh independent systems not developed to the same extent as a uh it just sorry i'm kind of rambling here but i hope i answered that question okay blue space uh, how many people managed to evacuate off earth before the fall and would it be possible for people to be still alive on earth just surviving in deep underground shelters so Probably not. They were pretty thorough when they were bombarding Earth uh, with nuclear weapons, so I very much doubt anyone survived. Uh, that would be a miracle if it happened. But uh, a lot of folks managed to get off Earth. Like, not many people actually died uh, during the Second uh, Synfaxi War. The evacuation was going on for about 150 years, 100 years, I think. A long time. So most people who wanted to get off of Earth got off of Earth. Um, the only folks uh, who were left behind were what were called the uh, the civilizational rear guard, like the guys who were keeping factories and, and stuff working on Earth, uh, knowing that, you know, 
every additional hour that Earth is providing for the colonies is thousands of lives uh, saved. So hopefully that answers uh, that. And Grey Guardian saying, hey, Templin Institute, are there mafias in the galaxy? Especially since the Italian and American mafias were never taken down. So I don't know about the mafia uh, existing, but there's definitely organized crime. I mean, what kind of sci-fi universe would it be without organized crime and space pirates? But uh, I don't know if there's actually the mafia, but uh, there could be. I'm not going to say it's impossible. And Grey Guardian asking, is the Orion Arm like 1900s mixed with Age of Sail? No, it's more like the Cold War mixed with aliens. I don't know, we did a whole uh, video about that. If you want to know kind of the, the fundamental nature of the universe, I would check out uh, videos we published to our uh, YouTube channel called We're Making a Sci-Fi Setting. We go into all this stuff there, so that's my advice. All right, so any... Uh, burning questions in the non super chat side of things I'll try to do a rapid fire approach here um uh, Rafael uh Chrismer? ah sorry uh, asking so what about the great vegan war who eventually stopped them any specific nations so uh there is actually a few we, we called them the solar wars just because they took place in the vicinity of Seoul but uh Vega won the first war Lost the second. Can't tell you why, because it's the focus of a future video we're doing. So, um, uh, yeah, but the, the Vega, the, the Solar Wars are a big deal in DOV, so more to say about that. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, very European focused. I don't know about that. We haven't really gotten to much Europe stuff yet. We got Brazil, India, so I don't know. Uh, Mr. Black saying, any chance of a United Scandinavia? The chance of a United Scandinavia is high. In the original incarnation of Donna Victor, we had a faction called the uh, the Federal Nordic Cooperative. And I don't know if they're coming back in that original form, but uh, Scandinavia is in. United, probably. Uh, what is the next video going to be? Can't tell you, but it'll be out in February. The plan is... Um, one video each month, so not necessarily one video every 30 days, but rather we'll have a video out in January, a video out in February, just to give us space for our regular schedule to, to work. Uh, da -da -da. Was having the Brazilian systems look like the Amazon River intentional? Uh, no, it wasn't. Does it look like the Amazon River? Because that's kind of good. Uh, how powerful is the Vatican? Probably, I mean, how powerful are they now? T to certain people, certain groups, they're powerful, but I think religion in, in DOV has kind of been subsumed a bit by the Cold War, so I don't know. Like, the Vatican moons don't have their own navy and army and stuff. Like, they're not a major power in any stretch of the imagination, but obviously they have great cultural impact uh, if you're the Vatican. Plus, like, probably a moon full of treasure and the Ark of the Covenant and, and all that stuff. A smart man asking, how many nations are you aiming for there to be when it's finished? I think the plan is close to 400, 400 nations. Um, but the idea is we're treating nations in DOV similar to how uh, houses are treated in Game of Thrones, where like some of the houses, House Stark, House Tyrell, House Lannister, like they have a bunch of backstory, they got a bunch of details, they got a bunch of of stuff you can learn about, whereas other houses in Game of Thrones have no info, where it's just they're on a map. So that's kind of the, the same the same plan. Uh, Tech Priest asking, why and when uh, did Ukraine secede from the Soviet Union? So technically, uh, Ukraine didn't secede. Legally speaking, uh, the Ukrainian SSR still exists. Um, the current idea for this bit of backstory is that um, the Soviet Union uh, had a bunch of colonies somewhere around here, and they were populated mainly by uh, the Ukrainian SSR, the Polish SSR, all the territories that the USSR kind of gobbled up uh, after the first Sinfaxi War. But then, um, so those colonies were here, the main USSR is somewhere around here, USSR. But then there's a dark age. These colonies are cut off from the Soviet Union. 
so all the communists kind of get overthrown. There's a bunch of murders, and uh, new governments are established. The communists are kind of done. So that's the that's the thinking. So there is still a Polish SSR. There is still a Ukrainian SSR, but the ma maybe not the majority, but a, a large part of the Ukrainian slash Polish slash Baltic states uh, live over here. So that's that's the plan. Oof, not going to be able to read this name, sorry. Uh, but asking, do you have any plans for Native American countries that are independent? Yes, so... Again, in the original version of Dawn of Victory, we had a bunch of Native American countries. Um, I can't remember them offhand. But yes, they will be a thing. And the... Uh, like, but, but It's kind of hard, right? Because I know that... I think many Native Americans, if they were given the chance, would want to have their own... Maybe their own country, but I'm, I'm sure that not everyone is uh, eager to leave America. So there's a balancing act where you want to show that these people have been given their own states, but they're also retaining their links to America. So there's a, a way to do that that I, I got to talk more about. But that's kind of just my first rough thinking about all this. So sorry if what I'm saying is still a little, uh, little rough here. Okay. And John Garrett asking, do traveling ships have to exit a string at a system and rejump, or can they continue on the string next uh, to the next system? So yes, that's an important question. So the idea is, uh, let's, man, what a terrible explanation of how the strings work, right? Okay, so I'll do my best to explain this. Uh, the idea is, so all these planets connected, or all these star systems connected by cosmic strings. And where you kind of end up in the star system is dependent on where the string kind of connects and where you're going. So if there's a planet here and a planet there, you might exit over here, or you might exit over here, depending on where you're going. So, like, the strings don't just go to one place. The strings kind of connect you to, to a big place. But the most valuable connections in the Orion Arm are where you can jump to here and then immediately jump to here. Uh, and that way you don't have to travel across the system. Whereas sometimes, in other star systems, to get to one or the other, you'd have to first jump to here, and then you gotta spend a week actually sailing across the star system to get to the next jump point, and then you can jump there. So, again, this is all rough, but I hope that makes a bit of sense, possibly. Anon asking, has anyone mentioned that the top says Down to Victory 02, even though this is the third stream? I don't know what you're... I was going to try to fix it on stream. Okay, never mind. That's a bad idea. I was going to fix it, but you called me out. That is a mistake. Sorry. And all right. Uh, one last question before we uh, before we end the stream here. Let's make it a good one. Uh, okay. Have humans left the Orion Arm? I... Uh, Probably... Okay, there's a couple ways to answer this, because technically, like, the Orion Arm means, like, a couple things, right? Like, the Orion Arm in DOV refers to the extent of human civilization, so the Orion Arm in DOV is like... What am I doing? I don't know. It's this thing, right? But the actual Orion Arm in the galaxy extends for thousands of light years, so... Technically, no, but in the spirit of your question, yes. There are settlements, not, there's, like, settlements kind of on the far reaches. There's, um, exploratory missions that have gone to the, uh, the edge of the map, so... Not the Orion Arm as it exists in the galaxy, but the Orion Arm as it exists in the human mind. Does that make any sense? The, the social construct of the Orion Arm has been left. I, I feel like I'm really rambling here, uh... <laughs> sorry, I hope these questions, uh, are coming through alright. All right, well, my uh, my voice is leaving me, so I think that's uh, my cue to, to take off here. So, let's make sure this is all saved. You know, only three sessions, but this map is already really coming together. Okay, before we leave, um, the map will be available on map.champlain.group. Hoping to get it updated by Sunday, but uh, we'll see how that goes. Oops, let me hide that comment. Uh, you can find more information on the wiki, 
and also on our secondary YouTube channel. So uh, until next time, thank you so much. We'll be trying to be coming back to this next Wednesday. So next Wednesday will be session four. And until then, thanks, folks, and uh, see you next time.